Hi, and welcome to another study session. My name is Josh. I am the pastor of Connection and Formation at the Heart, and I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to remind you that these study sessions are simply an opportunity for us to start a conversation. They're not meant to be comprehensive. They're not meant to be everything and anything that there is to say about a certain topic or concept, but instead they're just simply meant to maybe get the wheels turning for each of us to start thinking about and analyzing and considering the things that we believe and maybe more importantly, coming to better understand why we believe those things. So these study sessions are premiering every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. and you're welcome to tune in when that happens. They'll also be available on our YouTube channel uh, after the fact and you can check them out at any point in that regard. I also wanted to let you know that these study sessions are definitely connected to our digital spiritual formation groups and these online groups of people are meeting together during the week to discuss what they watch in these videos. They're also doing their own studies. And so if that's something that you want to be a part of, if that's something that you want to even host, let me know. Send me an email. I'll give you my email address here. And uh, just drop me a line and let me know if that's something that you want to be connected to. And we'll definitely get that conversation started. So again, thank you for joining us this evening. We're continuing a series that is looking at the values that we think are distinct at the heart. These are the things that we feel like we are called to specifically, but by no means are they exclusive to our church family. In fact, they are very much representative of what it means to be a follower of Christ. But for us, we wanted to look at these particular values a little bit more deeply so that we could better understand why we think that we're called to these and maybe even more importantly, how we can live these values out in a very real way, in a very tangible way, in a very visible way. And so last week I talked about simple and our value of simple and I talked a little bit about Maybe it's as easy or as simple, I shouldn't say easy because simple is not easy, but maybe it's as simple as loving God and loving people. And I gave some very specific examples of how we could perhaps live that out. And so today I want to talk about our value of loving. Now, just that word alone, I think you and I can look at it and, and understand and have seen how that word can be very big and it can mean a lot of different things. In fact, there's a lot of jokes that go around where in the English language you use the same word whether you love somebody deeply or whether you really enjoy a hamburger. <laughs> so there's a very limited uh, vocabulary, if you will, when it comes to loving. But we want to talk a lot about what it means from a biblical perspective perspective, what it means when we're talking about God's love for us and then our love for others. So I wanted to start by sharing what we have on our website. And we've written that loving is believing that we are called to love God with all of ourselves and to embrace people with this same kind of love. So again, a little bit of what I was talking about last week when I was talking about simple. But for you and I, what does it mean when we say loving? Or maybe even we back it up a little bit and we just say, what does it mean when we say the word love? Now there's a lot of examples in the Bible. There's a lot of Bible verses I could choose from. And I think you and I both know that, but I wanted to focus on one in particular. And it's about the most simple, the most straightforward definition of love I think there might be in the entire Bible. And it's three, three words, God is love. So in 1 John 4, in verse 16, John writes this, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. 
So there's a lot going on there. It's not just simply God is love, but it goes on to talk about how God actually abides in us and we abide in him. And so we are connected. This love is something that is deep, that is meaningful, that is significant. It ties us together. And it's much more than just loving a hamburger, isn't it? It is this this identifying love that we have because God loves us and because God is love. Jesus gave an amazing illustration of this when he told his parable of the prodigal son. For a lot of us, it's a very recognizable story. It's one that has a lot of different layers to it. And we, I think, have come to better understand that that story is not so much about the prodigal son as it is about the father himself. But essentially, a son comes to his father and he says that he wants to go away with his portion of the inheritance. And so he does that. He takes his inheritance. He leaves his home. And what does he do? He squanders it on his choice of living to the point where he is literally in a pig sty, a pig pen at one point, wishing that he were back home. So he gathers himself up, definitely feeling defeated, definitely feeling like a failure, feeling like when he goes back home, he is going to have to basically be a servant to his father in order to earn his good graces, in order to earn his way back into the household. But what do we hear instead? Jesus gives an amazing visual of who this father is, not so much about what he is and his stature, the the father figure that he is in the family, but just the heart of this father. And so the father sees his son coming from a distance away. That alone is an amazing message for each one of us that that this father is waiting for his son. He knows that his son is far away, and yet he is waiting for when he will see him again. And when he sees his son far off, the father stops everything that he is doing. He walks out, he throws off his cloak, and he goes running towards his son. In fact, Graham gave a wonderful illustration of how he probably ran out of his sandals to get to his son so that he could hug him and embrace him and welcome him back. It didn't matter to the father what the son had done. All that mattered was that the son had come home. And so he wanted to show that son that incredible love. And for those who were listening at the time, they definitely would have heard that this Elder statesman, this man of of stature, of prestige, who most of them would think would just simply stand at his doorstep and wait for his son to come back to him and even maybe make his son grovel and bow down before him and, and ask for forgiveness, beg for forgiveness even. But what they heard instead is that a man of that age, of that stature, of that prominence, ran to his son, which is something that that culture would have definitely taken note of. That is God. That is an unbelievable illustration of who God is and how much he loves us. And if that weren't enough, if that weren't enough, Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection, the fact that he goes and he pursues us up onto the cross in death, and that he pursues us into the ground, and then he resurrects to show just how far God will go in his love for us, for his pursuit of us. So I ask the question, how do you see God? How do you see God in your life? Do you feel like you are the one who is constantly pursuing him? Do you feel like he is distant? Do you feel like he is absent? Do you feel like you are constantly trying to find him or find your way to him? And you feel defeated. You feel like you are a failure. You feel like there's just no one there to accept you and to embrace you. Or 
have you come to recognize that God pursues us each and every day, that he is the father in that story of the prodigal son, that he is the one who pursues us, that runs to us before we even have a chance to get to his doorstep. Is that who you know God to be? And I think that that posture, that understanding of who God is, is very important to this idea of loving. Perspective is a huge part, I think, of what it means to love people and to love people well. When we have the perspective of God as a pursuer instead of us having to constantly pursue God, I think that changes everything. And so I wanted to share with you just kind of a fun little exercise and these illustrations that I came across, I don't even know when. And they're just simply to kind of further the point of what it means to have perspective, to see what is in front of us, but perhaps more importantly, to see what is beyond that which can be seen. So let me start with this one. Again, this is about perspective. So my question to you, if you, thinking about perspective, thinking about what you see, how you perceive it, how you see it, what does this drawing represent? I'll give you a couple seconds. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, so if it's about perspective, then you would come to recognize or understand why this is the view down from the top of someone wearing a sombrero, riding a bike. <laughs> okay, here I got another one. I have another one for you. Hold on a second. All right. Perspective. Again, another drawing for you to kind of further the point of perspective. What is this? Maybe you've seen this one before, maybe not. Okay, so perspective. This is a bear hugging a tree. You just happen to be seeing it from the other side of the tree. All right. Last one. Maybe you'll get this one. Or maybe you've already gotten all of them and you have great perspective. <laughs> all right. What is this? What is this? Any ideas? Any guesses? All right. This is you looking out a window and a giraffe happens to be walking by at the same time. <laughs> so this is his neck. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Those are some party tricks that you can share at your next party. But anyway, it's about perspective, isn't it? It's about this idea of where are you when it comes to who God is? Do you believe that he pursues you or do you feel like you're always pursuing him alone? So the, when it comes to understanding God pursuing us, I think we can be more proactive in our pursuit of others when we recognize that God is already pursuing us. So if we have that posture in our hearts, if we understand that God is already pursuing us, then I think in turn, we can be better about pursuing other people. Or another way to say it is that we no longer have to sit around feeling like we're being left out or that all these things are going on, but we're never getting an invitation. We're never getting a call, a text that somehow, you know, we're, we're missing the party. We no longer have to feel that way because we know already that God pursued us in the form of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection. And he continues to pursue us like the father in the story of the prodigal son. Do you believe that? And so maybe another way to say it is this. We no longer have to wait for the invitation. We no longer have to wait for the invitation. But instead, we can become the invitation itself. You and I no longer have to feel like we're being left out, that somehow things are happening without us because we understand that God himself has already shown himself to be faithful in his pursuit of us. 
so we can turn around and we can pursue others with that very same faithfulness, with that very same confidence, with that very same desire to run out and to embrace people and no longer to feel like we're being left behind. Another way that you could say it, and this is a, a saying that might be a bit of a different look at a saying, her people, her people. Maybe you've heard that. I think loved people love people. I think when we feel loved, when we understand the love of the Father himself, when we embrace that for ourselves, when that becomes center to all that we are, when all of our being is given to loving God and loving other people, then I think loved people love people like no one else. You no longer have to strive or work hard at it. You are loved, and so the overflow, the outpouring of that is just natural and is easy and is something that in turn fills you and fills you to overflowing again. And so this, it's this beautiful kind of cycle where you're gaining and giving, gaining and giving. It's a beautiful thing. So what are some ways that we could do that? Or maybe what is one particular way to do that? I think, especially in the days that we find ourselves in today, with our schedules being as packed as they are, with the things that we have going on in our lives being as many as they are, I think you and I have the gift of time to give that is valuable beyond all measure. I always say that we make priorities for the things that matter. What if time with somebody else to remind them that they matter is a priority in your life. Now, it's not to say that the things that you have given your time to are wrong or that they're, you know, poor stewardship or any of that kind of stuff. It's just a matter of us constantly and continually analyzing and making sure that the time that we're giving out is to the things that really matter, or maybe more importantly, to the people who really matter. I think that time is something that we feel is so precious that when we give that to other people, they can't help but receive that in the way that we give it. So for me, a lot of times what I do is in the morning, I'll just simply sit and I'll listen to God and I'll ask him to prompt me, to give me some clue if there is something that I should be aware of. But more importantly, if there's someone that I should be aware of, somebody I should be reaching out to, somebody that I need to check in with. And a lot of times he'll give me something. He'll give me a name. He'll give me a circumstance. And then I'll simply just send a text and I'll ask, how are you doing? Or I'll send a word of encouragement to somebody knowing that they're in a place of hardship or that they're struggling with something. Or even a a note of celebration because I know that they had something really wonderful happen in their lives. But I make time, I carve out that time with God in order for him to be able to tell me who it is that he has for me to reach out to. And more importantly, perhaps, it's to remind myself that God pursues me. I need to make time for him because he is important in my life. And he needs to be at the center of everything. So I asked the question, how are you going to give your time to somebody? Another way to say it is, what is your ministry of presence? That's just a fancy way of saying, how are you making time for the people who are important to you to remind them that they matter, to remind them that they are valued, to remind them that God himself is pursuing them because you are taking the time to reach out to them and to check in and to see how things are going and to be available to them, to make yourself available to them, to remind them that, you, that they matter to you. What are the things that you can do in your life to remind people of how valued they are, how loved they are. 
And so that's it. That's all I wanted to share on loving for this week. Hopefully, again, it's gotten some things turning in your mind. Maybe it's got you convicted about something. Maybe it's got you um, thinking that uh, you know what the next step is. Or maybe it just has given you more questions than answers, and that's okay too. Whatever it might be, I, I hope that this time was worthwhile. I hope that it gave you some insights that you didn't have before. And I invite you to watch again next Tuesday. I'm going to be talking about the value of true as we continue our series on the values of the heart, the heart of the heart. I wanted to ask you too, if you have a chance, you could subscribe to our channel and then you'll be notified when any new video is uploaded to our channel. And also too, again, if you want to connect to a digital spiritual formation group, send me an email. I'll provide my email address again. Let me know if that is something that you're interested in being a part of and or if it's something that you're interested in hosting. We are in definite need of hosts as we try to create and connect more people in digital spiritual formation groups. And so with that, thank you for your time this evening. I truly appreciate it. And may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he remind you that he is in pursuit of you, that he loves you, that you matter. And in turn, may you be able to share with others that very same love. Thank you.